He learned from those mistakes. His next competition was the Toronto Pro, of which I was watching, and he won by a landslide and then came second at his first Mr. Olympia competition. And that is all the difference that carbs and a proper carb up can make. Coach Greg, and in today's video, we're going to learn exactly how Chris Bumstead carb loads and how you can eat to look your absolute best, whether it's for a photo shoot, a day on the beach, and so how should you eat? And spoiler alert, it's not the same way that you would eat while prepping for a competition. As in, you don't eat the meals from my cookbook. It's in fact quite the opposite. And so for most people, they would have no idea that you eat completely different before a show to peak the body than you would while dieting for a competition. Back in 2016, my first ever pro show, yeah, he came out of nowhere. It's where our friendship began too. And grateful for that show, but I was never going to let that happen again. <laughs> and so what many of you don't know is that Chris Bumstead, in fact, lost his first pro show. And there were only four competitors in the show and he got third and he actually hide it in below six foot one at that show, three quarters of an inch shorter than he does now, but he was only weighing in the upper 220s. And I said to Chris, why are you so heavy? That's way too big. He had just won his pro card at the heavyweights in the North Americans and he hadn't died as hard as he should have. He showed up overcarbed, ate too much food and was spilled over. He wasn't shredded enough to overcome the likes of Terence who was far smaller than him. And so he learned from those mistakes and he won by a landslide and then came second at his first Mr. Olympia competition. And that is all the difference that carbs and a proper carb up can make. Connie told me when I wake up just to like eat because we were up so late last night. He wanted me to like get more food in me. So I ate before we started filming. Okay, and so we're two days before the Olympia, and at the Olympia, they weigh in early, two days early, and so Chris has already made weight. He was instructed, the first thing you do, wake up and eat. There is no time but the present. He now has to carb up. He only has two days to get the carbs in. He had to completely deplete his body. We've seen Chris in the past, 1,500 calories a day, starving himself to get below that weight class. Once you get below the weight class, you can eat whatever you want, weigh whatever you want. It's all about looking your best. But how does he do that? And so meal one, 120 grams of oatmeal, 115 grams of protein. And so about 450 calories of carbs and about 125 to 150 calories of protein. Typically when my carbs go up, my protein goes down a little bit. A for digestion volume, you need less protein. I'm not like trying to build muscle right now, just like give my body what it needs. And so when you carb deplete to make a weight class, you're hardly eating anything and your muscle glycogen stores are absolutely zero. And so the goal of the carb up is to fill the muscles with carbs and water in order to look full pumped up and vascular on stage. For every one gram of carb that your muscles store, it's going to hold three grams of water. And so you can't simply have no water at this point. Your body would then not carb up properly. It needs a combination of the carbs along with water to form muscle glycogen. And so he's still consuming some water, although not a lot, as well as the water that's contained in the foods that he's eating. When you're eating oatmeal, rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, there's clearly water in that. And so the carbs in the meal combine with the water to form glycogen, and that allows them to get a great, full-looking pump on stage. So I'm eating a lot of steak right now from the CLA creatine nutrients fat and that also help really fill you up and give you like a full look and salmon as well that's not why you're eating steak granted there is some creatine but not enough to make a significant difference in your physique and for years i'm talking 20 plus years ago people were saying don't consume creatine before show it'll make you hold water it's going to make you hold intracellular water within the muscle not subcutaneous and so it's not going to make you puffy bloated and prevent seeing the muscle underneath and so if you're looking to stay full, look your best, I strongly suggest you take creatine year round, not only to help you build muscle, but also to give you the swollen effect to allow you look more jacked than last time. Yeah, but does your stomach feel like it's digesting? Because if it's not, we can do a... Um... Is his stomach completely absorbed? Because if it's not, Hani says, we can do a... Um, uh, then realizes the camera's rolling and fails to say what he could do. He does not want you to know because people will be very critical. Listen. 
Bodybuilding is not healthy, and many of the things that people do to prepare for a bodybuilding competition would never suggest others to do it. For example, the use of diuretics to deplete the body of water. It's not healthy, it's dangerous. But of course, most bodybuilders are going to use diuretics to peak for the show. And so what is it that Hattie could be talking about? Well, he could be saying, we're going to do an enema. Inject water up there and clean you out. Or he may be suggesting that Chris use laxatives. Loosen things up, get him to poop. The last thing you want when you're on stage is food is sitting in your stomach and or colon making you look bloated. People say, oh, look, Roy gut. Meanwhile, it's the freaking salad, fruit, vegetables that you forgot you shouldn't eat. One thing you do not want to eat before going on stage is a lot of fiber. Fiber will cause you to blow. It could potentially cause a food baby. And if you're a classic physique guy trying to do a vacuum, you can't have food in your stomach. You can't eat burgers and fries and carb up and anything you want. And the other alternative is you'd go to the toilet as if it can't come out the backside, the only place left is your mouth. And so don't think that just because these are healthy bodybuilders that they won't resort to doing anything and everything to ensure that they look their best. Okay. That pretty good. That feels pretty empty. Yeah, no issue with that. Yeah. Shit in here? Only once, but the good shit. Is it working? You still get rid of that. Yep, okay, good. Because if you're not, we gotta make sure that you do. And so the last thing you want is to be constipated. And so if you are, and you're eating all this food and it's not exiting, something's staying inside. And that, that is not something you want. And so you have to get rid of it to look your best on stage. This is a boring meal, but still tastes good because it's food. And so taste at this point, it's irrelevant. The chicken, boring, but really does it matter? He's gonna be able to eat anything he wants in a matter of two days. And so one thing that I wanna make clear is this is a carb up. The fats that he's eating are not helping to make his physique look better. And so if all he did was fat load, consume oils, steak, protein, and no carbs whatsoever, he would have a completely different looking physique than if he ate carbs. He would be smaller, less full, less vascular, less pump, but possibly more dry. Carbs store water, and without carbs, you're going to lose a lot of weight. And so when you're trying to make weight, the most important thing you need to do is reduce the amount of water you're consuming and carbs. The carbs will store the water. And so if you cut all carbs out from your diet, you very easily can lose 5, 10, or even more pounds prior to a weigh-in. And so regardless of the sport you're in, powerlifting, bodybuilding, boxing, UFC, any sport involving weight classes, you will see athletes dramatically reduce carbs and water and sometimes abuse diuretics to make weight. Probably so eating a lot of steak right now because you see a lot of creatine nutrients, fat, and that also help really fill you up and give you like a full look. And salmon as well. And so no, steak doesn't fill you up and give you a better look. Steak actually is a lot slower to digest than carbs. And so it's very important when carving up to reduce your protein and fat content. And so if you're sitting back eating a tomahawk steak thinking, oh, it's got loads of fat, protein, that's gonna help you look better on stage, it's gonna do the opposite. It sits in your stomach and takes far longer to digest than carbs. You may in fact still have that steak sitting in you 12 to 18 hours later. And so when I prepare competitors for competition, I dramatically reduce steak, chicken, salmon, fish, all sorts of protein and or fats and make the athletes primarily stick to eating carbs. Zero diuretic. I might not even need to take any to be honest because I'm just like flushing through stuff. And so consider this. Chris has yet to use any diuretics. He simply doesn't need it. He's so on point. He's so shredded that even without diuretics, he's able to make weight and looks dry. I'm sure he's used diuretics in the past. Perhaps he won't for this show. It all comes down to how you look. If you look absolutely shredded, bone dry, and you know you're going to win, then why would you add it? And so the last two days before a show, you're probably thinking, well, what are they doing? Are they going to the gym and working out all the time and training, doing tons of cardio? No, they're quite literally trying to pass the time. At this point, you've been dieting long enough. You're already shredded. You're just trying to fine tune things. And so what do you do? You lay back, legs up, trying to relax and pass the time. It feels like time stands still. An hour feels like a day. You just can't wait to make it to the competition. Anything to make the time go by. And so he's watching movie after movie, X-Men, Wolverine, whatever. Put on something. Get my mind off actually competing because I just want to make it to the show. There it is. Got some 150 rice, 100 potato, 100 other potato, 140 steak. 
300 milligrams of sodium. And one thing to note, added in 300 milligrams of sodium, there is some salt these foods, but one thing you don't want to do is cut out all your salt. If you do so, you can end up cramping on stage. I've had this happen in the past. It is not fun. When a bodybuilder is this lean, this shredded, and prepared to compete on stage, you are at your weakest. Anything can go wrong, and so it's important to keep on top of everything. Let's see how his body is responding. Have you checked your weight by chance? Yes, 240.2. And so many of you think that these athletes, they weigh in and then they eat and they gain 10 pounds. These guys are not weighing in and gaining 10 and 20 pounds. I've talked to a number of competitors, even IP pros, thinking, yeah, they're this much a weigh-in, but once they get on stage, they're 20 pounds heavier. Bull freaking shit. Chris Bumstead's weight limit is 240. He's currently 240.2. And by the time he gets on stage a day later, he's going to be smaller. You're not growing into the show. You're actually getting leaner. You're dehydrating the body. And so if you weigh in a certain amount and you're now 10 pounds heavier, it's not going to look like quality weight. Sure, you're bigger, but what's important is you look tighter. Exhibit A with Big Rammy. Guy was huge, looked massive. But had he came in 10 pounds smaller, he certainly would have looked better. And so bigger is not always better. Oh. Oh. Yeah! And after this, Chris is off to go and meet the fans, hooks up with Jesse James West, who's dressed like Chris. He's impersonating him. He's a fake Chris Bumstead. And somehow he managed to fool people with the stash and the bouncers. Did you watch that video? Even Chris said, credit where credit is due. This was one funny ass video. Get it down, get my tan on. And remember, he's still eating every two hours. And when you've been dieting for this long and you start eating, it actually makes you feel strange. You get hot sweats, you, you have energy, but you don't. Your veins pop out and then they stop. You don't know what's going on. It doesn't actually feel good. And I can tell you from personal experience, being thirsty is worse than being hungry. And I woke up the same the same way I woke up as Wednesday. And so it's now the day before the show and he weighs the same as he did the previous day. He ate all those food every 10 hours, probably eight to 10 meals, yet he weighs the same. And you're thinking, oh no, they gain all this weight. No, they don't. All right, so because my weight was a little low, I'm like, all right, get some fats in, but I didn't want any more water in my oats or anything like that. And so he's cutting out water. He's having rice cakes and avocado. And when you add rice cakes as opposed to rice, there's less water. And so you dry up even more. The body can then suck up whatever water's floating around, put it right into the muscle. He's trying to look as dry while being as full as possible. And so what you do is you go from having wet carbs to dry carbs. Wet carbs being the form of rice, potatoes, and so on. And dry carbs, in this case, in the form of rice cakes. Everything right now I'm doing is optimal digestion, optimal bloating, because I don't want to have a bloated stomach. I want to make sure the food's passing through me. And so at this point, one day out, Everything is eating, it's all about digestion. He needs to get the food in, food out. And so more important than being healthy is, can your body actually digest that food? And if it can't, don't eat it. If you're eating salads, fruits and vegetables, low calorie dense foods, popcorn, it's not good. My body's not used to eating shit foods, so some people want to carve up, they want to have hamburgers, they want to have sugar or whatever. But then you can get bloated back of your digestion and your stomach looks like shit, you start to look watery. You don't want that. And so Chris, he's not going to take the chance to eat burgers and fries and chips and candies. He hasn't had that in so long. He doesn't trust that he'll be able to digest it. However, if you can digest it, there's nothing wrong with that. When I'm carving up for show, I'm eating candies, chocolate, all kinds of crap that you would never think someone could eat. But for me, no problem with digestion. And so after the competition, people are asking, what do you want to eat? Is it pizza, burgers, fries? What do you want? And I'm like, I've eaten all of those things prior to the competition. What I now want to eat, fruit and vegetables and anything with water. I'm thirsty. Beautiful. Salmon, rice, and sweet potato. So he's eating salmon, rice, and sweet potatoes, and he's like, this is just heaven. He can't believe how good it tastes. And so this is coming from a guy who starved himself for three months to get to 4% body fat. Normal guy, off season, they're not gonna be all excited. I'm eating rice and sweet potatoes and salmon, plain. How many people think that that sounds like heaven? Probably not many. But for Chris, 
This tastes amazing. He's saying, all these fats, it's giving me so much energy. Chris, it's not the fats, it's more so the carbs. The fats are in fact slowing down absorption and so fats are much lower on the glycemic index. And so the glycemic load of the meal, it's how fast the food gets converted into blood sugar in the body. So when you add fats, proteins, fibers into a meal with carbs, it slows down the rate of absorption. Now what's important to know is Chris is weighing in two days before the show, not the night before but two days early. And so when I'm coaching athletes, they're not carving up for several days. You don't need that. But to make up for it, we have a diet much lower in fats and protein to in fact speed up the absorption rate. If Chris were to take out the salmon and just eat rice and sweet potatoes, it would absorb a lot quicker. And in case you didn't know, sweet potatoes, they contain fiber. And so he knows because he's carving up for several days, there's no rush. And so he's allowing them to have some small amounts of fiber, fats and proteins, as it's not going to affect him in the end. And so if you're watching this video to learn, you can't simply copy someone else's peak week. You need to know what are your specifics, when do you weigh in, and when are you competing? And if you only have a day or several hours to carve up, you don't want to consume a lot of fats, proteins, and or fiber. But if you are far below your weight class and you're doing a long drawn out carb up for several days, then this is not a problem. Personally, I've seen a lot of people blow it when they start carving up early, for example, three days out. Sometimes once you start eating carbs again, you can't stop. The floodgates open and you can't shut them. And so you start eating calorie after calorie and before you know it, you've eaten far too much and you spill over. And so please be careful. A peak week or carb up protocol can make or break all the work you did for the past three, maybe even four months going into the competition. Hopefully you learn something ending it here. Looking for HGLT supplements, use code GREG, 10% off. In particular, Acti Builder and Geo2 Max, this one in particular, the main ingredient, NMN, recent literature, double blind placebo control groups with humans, not animals, shows that the stuff works. And so unfortunately, once it's gone, it's gone. Highly suggest Pick this up now, click the link in the description, 10% off. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm, watch one of the boobs, follow me on Instagram, it's Greg Doucette, IFBB Pro, lots going on there. Don't forget about the cookbooks, training books, the circle diet book, coaching plans by me and my team, phone consults, and until next time, I am out.